This is another scary story posted by a Travel 3R, narrated by its Wonderbread. I grew up in a 110 year old house. These are some of my unfortunate memories. It started when I was 8 years old, maybe before that, but I can't remember. It was unfortunate that I remember the things I'm going to recall in this post, whether it be the pots and pans rattling, the footsteps coming from upstairs my grandmother told me were mice, or the general feeling of unease being in that house at night. I'm not going to say that it was pure terror and misery for the entire time I lived there. Some days were pretty good, but it shaped my paranoia and taught me how to ignore things that would absolutely terrify a normal person. I refused to sleep upstairs in my room by myself, so my grandmother allowed me to sleep on the couch in the living room. My grandparents were weird. My grandfather slept in a bed in their bedroom, and my grandmother slept on a couch in the living room. I slept on the couch opposite of hers. The house was really old, but my grandmother had some serious OCD, so it was nice, clean, and everything had a place. <sighs> I knew something was off on my grandmother from the beginning. She was so bitter, and sometimes just plain cruel. I think my dad playing with the Ouija board in our house when he was young started everything. It told him the order, and his two friends were going to die, and they all died in that order. Whatever he let in that day affected me and my brother so very intensely and possibly possessed my grandmother, causing her hatred. The strange things only stopped happening after she died. Unfortunately for us, there was a lot to endure until that day finally came. I remember laying on the shit brown colored couch, trying so hard to sleep. Then I would hear the pots and pans in the kitchen being rattled around. My grandmother knew I was going to say something. Like an automatic message, she would sit up, speak, and say it was Grandpa. But he was upstairs in his computer room. I would have heard him come down the stairs. It was not Grandpa. After they stopped, I would hear the footsteps all night long in the room above us. Once again, like a machine that sensed my fear, she would speak up and say, It's just nice. Go to sleep, goddammit. I was young, but knew a mouse. Didn't weigh enough to have footfalls like that. So that was my early childhood there. Nothing too serious, but as I got older, things began to get more and more intense. I was 15 when I decided I was too old to be sleeping in the living room with my grandmother. And besides, I was sick to death of falling asleep to Golden Girls and the fucking Lifetime channel. So I worked up the courage to brave the upstairs room that my dad had played the Ouija board in. I arranged it nicely with a couch, bed, coffee table, and a recliner. Made it the hangout for me and my friends, and for a while, it was pretty sweet. But like a hit of LSD, this nasty shit comes in waves. I'll never forget when the next one came crashing down on me and washed any courage I had. Lying in my bed, watching adults swim. It was a Friday night, and I usually stayed up pretty late. I had reached over to turn my light off and kick back and watch some Family Guy, followed by whatever other nonsense came on after. When I heard the tap, tap, and I tried to locate the surface that was being tapped upon. It was my door frame, and through the fractal art tapestry I had hanging over my doorway, I could see the silhouette of someone, who I assumed was my grandfather. But then it opened its eyes, and I could see the deep red crimson peering through the tapestry right at me, frozen in complete and much total fear. I knew then that what fucked with me in my younger years was back, and it was going to be much much worse. I never wasted the time to tell anyone about this because I knew I sounded insane. But it happened, and I thought about it all the next day. When nightfall came, I retired back to my room, hoping in vain for a better night. I was sitting on my couch, playing my Xbox, and from outside my open window, I heard something whisper my name. But it didn't really sound like a voice right at the window. More like it was whispered from far away and carried through the wind into my ear. I immediately dropped my controller and felt sheer panic set in, knowing that nothing I could do would save me from this menacing force that was messing with my mental stability. I stood up and went to my grandfather's computer room and grabbed the Mossberg 12 gauge and brought it back to my room and sat there on the couch waiting to pump slug after slug into whatever may come through that window that night. Nothing ever did 
Even if it had, all the firearms in the world wouldn't have done me any good, looking back. Although, it did on some levels make me feel safer. Not long after that, my dad was in the other room opposite of mine and yelled for me. I was slightly busy with something and just said, What? He replied, Your stereo is turning up and down by itself. I just replied that it must be broken. Dad said, No. The knob for the volume is moving on its own. As this was nothing new for me, I just dismissed it and honestly didn't need any more creepy shit than I had already dealt with. Fifteen minutes later, sadly, my father lay dead in my bathroom downstairs. He died of an apparent overdose. I tried like hell to save him. CPR was no match for what took him from this world. He had been acting strange lately. Making amends with people, apologizing for what things he did in the past. I think he knew it was coming. Ouija board kept its promise and took my father last. Many more things happened in those times of my life. Nothing quite as bad as those three incidents. But it tapered off after my father died till I was 20. This is the last incident I will recount for the night as my eyes are growing heavy and thinking about these times in my life make me deeply uncomfortable. When I was 20, I was still in that same room, although a little rearranged. I had just finished watching a movie and I had to piss so bad. Like doing the pee-pee dance bad. But something inside me was begging me not to open that door and traverse the stairs to the bathroom. But what the fuck was I gonna do? Piss my pants? Too old for that. So against every bit of intuition, I went. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, the hair on my neck stood up on the end and I instantly had chills run down my spine. I tried to ignore this and rounded the corner to the bathroom and shut the door. I finally relieved myself, and man, it was great. But when I turned around and placed my hand on the doorknob, I had this ridiculous fear wash over me. I stood there, staring at the door for 15 minutes, scared to death of whatever was on the other side of my spidey senses. But just like not being able to piss myself, I couldn't really just sleep in the bathroom all night. So I gripped the doorknob, turned it slowly, and prepared myself for what I could already feel. As I opened the door, I saw a massive tall shadow move across my back porch, not touching the ground, but so tall that it bent onto my ceiling. As it traversed the porch and worked its way along the wall towards me, I finally broke the fear drive that I was in and ran up the stairs. I swear I could feel it inches from grabbing my ankle and dragging me back down the stairs to my demise. I made the corner at the top of the stairs and ran into my room. I slammed the door so hard behind me and I never had touched it. I couldn't fall asleep till the daylight that day. Believe it or not, these things really happened to me. These are actual memories that I wish I didn't have. But it was definitely nice to finally share with you all. I know someone will believe me. Others will think I'm insane, but it happened, and I will never forget these unfortunate memories. Ding dong, I know.